As the calendar flips to a fresh page and 2017 becomes nothing more than a memory, the battle-tested Michigan State Spartans head into the heart of Big Ten play. With last season's win total already eclipsed, a buzz surrounds the revival of the storied program. Savvy play by veteran leaders and impactful lessons learned from historic teams have helped the Spartans learn what it takes to contend. I think I must have been about three years old when I uh, started playing hockey. My sister was a figure skater uh, growing up, so she would always be at the rink and, and doing her stuff. And then, so my oldest brother wanted to be like my sister and start skating just like her. And then my middle brother wanted to be just like my oldest brother and it trickled all the way down to me wanting to be just like uh, my brother. So I was always, uh, always at the rink, always around skating, whether it was figure skating or hockey. That time at the rink paid off for Carson, as he would soon be playing for some of the best youth teams in the Metro Detroit area. I had two memorable moments in youth hockey. One was the, uh, the Quebec tournament. Went over to Quebec and you actually build it with a family there for about seven to 10, 10 days, I think it was. So that was cool going over to Quebec and, and sightseeing and all that kind of stuff and also playing in a really competitive uh, environment. The other one would have to be winning the, the state championship when I played for uh, Victory Honda. Uh, that was over uh, Bell Tire and uh, I always think that's cool because Dylan Pavlik and uh, Damian played on that team along with some other guys who are who are in the NHL now so it's kind of cool to think back that I was playing against those guys uh, at such a young age. Gad received athletic attention off the ice as well, and was supposed to be a dual sports star at powerhouse Detroit Catholic Central. Trying to figure out how to balance those two, because football runs all the way until uh, Thanksgiving, and by then the hockey season would have already started. So I was trying to figure out how to balance being a freshman uh, on the varsity hockey team and also playing football, and I just didn't think those two uh, could go together with doing the, the national camps in the summer and kind of getting uh, some junior and, and college exposure through those camps in Rochester and Buffalo, New York. Um, I kind of realized that hockey was more of a viable option for me uh, to be able to play a college sport. So uh, I would have loved to continue to play football, but uh, the stars weren't aligned for that. While football ended up not being in the ultimate plan for Carson, he did go on to excel in DCC hockey, playing for three seasons and being drafted to the USHL's Muskegon Lumberjacks in 2013. Although he battled multiple injuries while in Muskegon, Carson kept his composure on the ice and committed to Michigan State. Life was looking good, and then came the call. It was the day of a game. I still remember this very vividly. I saw stuff on, on Twitter, like uh, from my old teammates and friends, kind of like pray for Matt. And uh, I didn't really know what was going on. So I, I texted my mom and she was just getting uh, more and more details. And at first we didn't, I thought it may have been like a concussion or something. And then um, as time went on and that day went on, my mom kind of told me, hey, it's not, not looking very good. His longtime friend and former teammate, Matt Chirizo, had crashed into the boards during a game, severing his spinal cord and leaving him paralyzed from the waist down. I remember I was eating my pregame meal at my uh, billet house at that time, and as soon as I found out, it was, I couldn't even finish eating. It, it would just made my stomach feel awful and uh, it was, it was kind of tough to go out and play a hockey game after that, and it was definitely on my mind then, and, and really always is on my mind. Come on, Matty. Easy work. Yep, come on. An inspiration to so many, Matt continues to battle in recovery and is on Carson's heart as he wears number 18 and writes Matt's initials on his stick before each game. We used to call him the, the chiseler because he was always uh, around the net. He was always a, a scrappy little guy and he would, he'd be the type of guy where like the puck would be going in the net and it would barely touch his stick and then he would get the, the goal for it or he was always trying to get uh, second assist and all that kind of stuff. So he was 
really intense and really had a love for the game. So kind of just embracing that and having my own love for the game and realizing how lucky I am to uh, come out and, and play this game. And uh, if I could somehow find my way around the net and chisel a few goals away like, uh, like he used to do, that'd be awesome. But kind of just enjoying and celebrating the game is, is really the best way to, to honor him. Upon arrival to East Lansing, Carson found himself in the lineup. He dressed for all 35 games that season and gained invaluable experience on the blue line. That experience would prove pivotal as the Spartans and Gat were thrown a curveball entering 2015. Sophomore year, I remember hearing that Josh Jacobs had left and that uh, Brock Krieger was transferring. So there were two uh, defensemen who were expected to come back that ended up not coming back. So I remember talking with the coaches and he was saying, hey, we're going to need need you to step up and, and fill the role um, of some of those guys, which obviously as a, as a competitor, you love. I was sad to see those guys go, but at the same time, you're uh, ready to embrace the, the role and the challenge that is upon you. The Spartans often found themselves down that season as Gat and the defensive unit struggled to keep the opposition off the scoreboard. I got the ice time that I wanted, but I maybe didn't perform as well as I wanted to. So for someone like myself, I think I did need to go through uh, some of those tough uh, learning experiences, those bumps and bruises, not playing when I wanted to, getting at the end of that offseason, kind of took a step back and said, okay, I know this upcoming year I'm going to get a similar or increased uh, ice time. So how do I make the most of that? Get off the rebound, score! Trying to force that in front, and the bank shot works. Carson Gatt with the equalizer. And we had a, a lot of freshmen uh, defensemen coming in last year. That's kind of where it said, hey, I need to be a little bit more of a leader. And uh, it was just Brett Holland and I who were uh, back with experience on D. So we talked and had a pretty good relationship. And thought he did a really good job of that, too. And he was a good mentor for me last year. Carson went on to win all conference honors and post his best season in the green and white, ultimately setting him up to be a key player for the Spartans his senior year. Last year really gave me the confidence playing in those situations. So this year they're, they're not as new to me. If we're down a goal, I, I want to be out there. I want to be able to try to help score that goal to tie the game. Or if we're winning by a goal, I want to be in the, in the defensive zone, blocking shots, getting the puck out. He's a great example for our young guys in terms of you know, getting here and finding ice time and increasing your value on a team. And he's worked up till now where he's, you know, he's a power play penalty kill and, and five on five guy and, and, and logs the most ice on the team. So he's been a tremendous example and, and the base that he's helping us build will be felt around here for a long time. Mills, Mills. Hey, regroup, regroup. Heads up, heads up, heads up. Take your time. Yeah. On you, reverse, reverse. Nice catch, Pat, nice catch. Carson, you know, being a senior and his experience and his work ethic, that uh, um, that would be great for, for Tommy to be around. And um, fortunately uh, for us, it's kind of worked out really well. They're just an excellent pair. They, they um, again, log a ton of ice and, and get tough matchups all the time. I think Carson is just a good steady and influence. Um, Tommy's a real mature young man, and I think, uh, I think he watches Carson. I think he watches how he approaches things. I think he uh, um, follows his lead in practice, follows his lead in games. What? Almost dirty? Yeah, almost. Him being my partner and I sit right next to him in the locker room, I can see what he does in practice, before practice, before games, and kind of just make mental notes and be like, hey, like this is what I got to do, or even just little things like communication on the ice, like this will work, this won't work. And then in games, he talks a lot, which helps tons, because I don't know what's going on, and then he's like, Millsy, I'm here, or I'm there, and he tells me where to go, so it's unbelievable the amount of help that he's had on me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, got, I shouldn't be like really skating forward, I should almost be backwards skating, and then like be able to open turn. Kind of just talk the game with them sometimes. Hey, I was open there if, if you need, you made a good, good play to the forward, but next time if that guy's stick is there or whatever, I just want to let you know I was, I was open there, or I was there in support for you. So to kind of come off that way is a little bit better and he's done a great job at that too where 
hey, I was I was open there in the middle of the ice or something like that, or I was close to that, that defender, I could have taken him. We do a good job of uh, learning from each other and talking things out. Carson is not only focused on helping his defensive partner in his final season, but he hopes to leave a lasting imprint on the program. Just to come every single day and, and work hard and kind of take no, no days off and kind of show maybe the younger guys what it takes that you got to come to practice and you got to work hard and not just at hockey but in school and relationships off the ice to kind of be the spark or the senior class that that was really the the turning point i we've talked about that before uh, as a senior class with coach and just that that flip of the switch that hey that was that moment that senior class was the class in the in the leadership that was able to to spark that that turnaround and you know, hopefully when I'm coming back uh, as an alumni, I'm seeing more banners being hung in GLI championships and Big Ten championships, tournament and regular season. And if I could be like, hey, I was, I was a senior class uh, with Coach Cole, and, and now look, they've, they've won four national championships and have all this glory. And hey, I, I, was, I was kind of a, a part of that or, or the beginning of it, I think uh, would be a pretty cool legacy for me to have. Sometimes a team defies the odds and leaves an everlasting impact on those that endure the journey. We remember the iconic plays, incredible moments, and overwhelming joy. All too quickly, those feelings become memories, but the stories never grow old. Back home in the friendly confines, 10 years ago feels like only yesterday for the 2007 Spartans. There was a lot of disappointment coming out of the, what was our, my junior year. Um, Really thought that was our time, but uh, I don't think we really kind of knew what was going on. Everything happened so quick. We lost suddenly. We really thought that was our year. Drew left, and there was a lot of unknowns. So I, I think we just kind of showed up with a you know a good attitude. I think what we all felt kind of upset, um, you know, when we played a really good main team in Albany, and uh, and I remember too in the summer when we got back, we had that main score written on the board for the, literally the entire year. Bishop plays it to the corner, and the Black Bears head to Milwaukee. We knew we had a good team, but you just, you never know what's gonna happen. And then every class added a different element. So everybody did something special in their own way, and it contributed to, uh, to, to being a good combination of, uh, of guys. And then as, as the season went on, we had ups and downs, we really got on a roll towards the end. Even going into playoffs, we, we were kind of playing for our lives at the end of our regular season. We weren't a, we weren't a shoe in by any means. I think we were kind of a bubble team. We had to beat Lake State at the, the Joe to be able to get into the, to the playoffs. Play goal tonight. Top Vuk. of the slot, Vuk with a blast over the Vuk. Vuk. Yes! Oh! 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 with the game winner in overtime. Final score, Michigan State seven, Lake Superior six. A win in the last game of the regular season got the Spartans into the NCAA tournament where they dispatched Boston University and Notre Dame en route to the Frozen Four. Then with four unanswered goals and a victory over Maine, the Spartans earned a spot in the title game. The good thing about our team is we were underdogs, so we had nothing to lose. We were still having just as much fun as the day we started playoffs. We just had a good time. I don't know how else to say it. I think that made us pretty scary as a team because we had a lot of good players that weren't, weren't overthinking things. BC was, was pretty loaded, high-powered offense, and, and we, just had to, we just had to get them to play, play the way we wanted to play and keep it close and, uh, and, uh, and, and grind them because that's what we were good at. And we were pretty good at scoring timely goals um, uh, throughout the season, and that's, that's obviously what we did. And they have not been able to convert. Michigan State, Kennedy leading score, trying to get a tie. Kennedy scores! 1-1! to the near side and held in. 24 seconds to go in regulation. Kennedy, Kennedy looking, center shot, and a score! They score! Empty net at the other end, pushed in, and that's going to do it. Mueller drives it home. Michigan State has won the Division I Ice Hockey Championship. All of us, especially our class and some of the other guys on the team, really just really wanted so badly to be a part of the history of Michigan State and Michigan State hockey. And um, what better way to go out? And it, it meant a lot. I think it's still a little bit of a blur, but 
you're able to look back at some of the pictures and videos and it's, uh, it was a lot of fun and a group of guys that will have a bond forever and we're, uh, we're lucky for that. You guys, for the rest of your lives, remember tonight. <laughs> Never forget tonight. It's a wonderful experience. <laughs> wonderful! <laughs> never forget seeing Coach Izzo at the airport and uh, and him shaking our hands like as we got off and like that really meant a lot to, to me and I know a lot of the other guys and then and then the uh, you know, the administration and the coaching staff supporting us like when we got back and then obviously seeing all our, our, all our friends all our uh, fellow students when we got back to campus in the next couple weeks was uh, was pretty funny and, and obviously the parade and then and then ending up here it was just such a whirlwind to, to try and take in, but it was, a, it was a lot of fun for sure. Hey, what's up, buddy? Good to see you. I'll see you next weekend. All the guys are still here. It's great, man. Beautiful thing about uh, being fortunate enough to, to play for a university or any school in general uh, is that you're a part of it and, and you don't get forgotten. And so we're lucky that we get a chance to come back here and, and be able to have a great time in God's country, what I call it, here in East Lansing. To do it here in a place that we all really feel like home. I mean, to come back and pick up where we where we left off earlier. Um, some of these guys I haven't seen since then, honestly. And you just pick up right up, and you don't really talk about hockey much. It's life. It's things like this that's going on. But you bust on each other and have fun. And uh, we're really lucky to come back, and um, thankful to the whole administration and the athletic department for bringing us back. I see the picture out front. You know, I see the banner up up in the rafters, and uh, to see that and know that. That you've got that and it doesn't it doesn't leave and it just reminds you of of what a special group of guys can accomplish in a in a short period of time that you know, you'll never forget it it was very special to have those guys come back you know we were fortunate enough to talk to them and you know hear some of the stories that were pretty incredible you know of them winning the national championship and them just being you know just around the locker room every day just looking at the walls and appreciating everything that that they did for this program and that the program did for them. It's really special. The lesson for our guys is, is when talking to those guys, just, just how important their time was here, how much they valued it, how much uh, it's impacted the rest of their lives. And uh, you know, you have that, that Spartan experience and, and, and we've talked about that, how, how special it is uh, to be from here and, and the experiences you take with it will last you a lifetime and, and you'll always be a Spartan. Side pass, shot, score! Your Spartans are the champions of the 45th annual Great Lakes Invitational Tournament. But they have defended their GLI crowd. And that banner will stay up there in the Raptors until this time next year. And we'll come back here, do it again, and, and hang a new one. For 53 years, Detroit has been home to one of the biggest holiday tournaments in the country. The Great Lakes Invitational has been played in three different venues through the years. And with the Motor City in the middle of a renaissance, Hockey Town is also getting a facelift. This season, the GLI moves to the sensational new Little Caesars Arena, where the Spartans will hope to help christen the building with a championship banner of their own. Playing those games down in, in Detroit and, uh, and, and at Little Caesars Arena now, um, I think is, is tremendously important for, for not just Michigan State, but for college hockey. And I think it's a great showcase uh, the Detroit area is, is, is one of the best uh, hockey hotbeds uh, in the United States and, and just to have the college game and the exposure and, and, and have the young kids and the fans um, get to see what college hockey is all about and you get to see those, you know, the exciting games, uh, you know, with us playing Michigan and having Michigan Tech in every year. I got my first taste of it last year and um, the GLI I think is just something special that we get to do every year and obviously playing a little Caesar Arena is going to be Unreal. I mean, a lot of guys have been there. They said it's world class, and um, I haven't been there yet, but I'm really looking forward to getting to see what the locker rooms are like and everything around the rink. 
you want to be a big time player and you want to play in those big moments on those big stages. Uh, anytime you get that, that opportunity, uh, I think it just only amplifies things even more and you want to be ready for those. It's a privilege that our school has uh, over a lot of schools in the NCAA and to be able to have that, it's a, it's a huge selling point for recruits and that's what, that's what you want as a hockey player is to be able to play in those, those big time games like that. I played in uh, Joe Lewis Arena my first two years, and there's a lot of history in that building. And um, we hope, you know, starting at the new Little Caesars Arena, we create more memories just by having, you know, those rivalry games like Michigan. A dream come true. It's such an amazing arena. It's probably the best in the NHL now and best stadium in the world. So to be able to just go play a game there on New Year's like that is just kind of amazing. and kind of soak it all in and I know it's not real yet until we get there but I'm sure once we get there we get to look around and I've already been to a game so um, really excited really can't wait to play in that game. The rise in college hockey and, and the number of teams from when I played uh, till now has in, increased dramatically I think is a direct result of, of people seeing young guys seeing college and um, seeing the games and, and wanting to play and, and be in that place later on. So I think it, it accomplishes an awful lot of things and it's not just not just a great tournament for us, but I think it's great for college hockey. Is there, sorry, I felt like there was a piece of hair dangling. You know, still kind of look the same. Some of us have some families, some of us have mustaches. It came together for us. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. yeah. Um, oh, good jump. I don't think you got off the ground. <laughs> I don't want game. That's two points. You got something to say, Sandy? Yeah, Justin's a loser. <laughs> oh.